said, meet me at the mall. Uh, it's, it's going, going down. down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess in these last couple of years of dealing with uh, Hashimoto's, I've learned to love each version of myself. Even in this juncture of my life, I had to learn to accept myself. I needed someone to shake my worldview mm -hmm. so that I could change my mind and realize, oh, I'm killing myself on accident. It's not the water that's outside the ship that sinks it. It's the water that's mm -hmm. inside the ship that gets inside that sinks the ship. First of all, you should have just mic dropped after that whole <laughs> I thing. I know, I was, I was just, just like... Being a creative person, I feel like is the biggest gift that I've, that I've been given. I'm able to take all of these moments, these negative moments, painful moments, amazing, happy moments, and put it into art and to create something. We're talking about dedication to mastery. That's the title of this podcast, by the way. All right, welcome everybody to the Rodriguez Project here at Mastermind Media. Daryl Blaylock is in the house. What's up, Daryl? What was that like? Dang. First time on the Rodriguez Project. It We've is. done several other podcasts together. How you feeling, man? Happy September. Happy birthday month. Goddamn right. <laughs> That's how you introduce me, goddamn. Yeah. It is my birthday month. It is a good time to be alive, and we are celebrating being my last year, my goddamn 30s. And we're oh, going to celebrate oh, we in a different shot. way. We're going to oh, do yeah. a different a different thing. So um, <laughs> yeah. what we realized as we get into our, our later Th uh, 30s it's all about health man yeah, and yeah. Uh, this is on, on something you've been taking uh, a spoonful of olive oil every morning mm -hmm. so this is like this is a very similar thing this is olive oil as well but this has like a high level of what is it called again? polyphenols yeah something something like that, something like that. Polyphenols. probiotics prebiotics postbiotics and oh, that's what like the, that. that's what the uh, biocomplete three is, is that i've been taking every day too but okay. this i guess olive oil and a lot of the extra virgin olive oils on the shelves don't come close to what this how so they've been lying to me man that's the, that's the thing it's like oh i want to eat healthy you go buy the food that are healthy but we don't realize that because of the margins that these big companies had, they need to increase their margins. So they got to yeah. add a little of this, add a little bit of that, and that's yeah. been messing us up. So, as two individuals finding our health journey later in life, <laughs> cheers, brother. There it is. Mm. Watch the face. Watch the face. Let's see. Well, I, pretty bitter, huh? I might want to chase it with some uh, soda. Uh, what I just realized is, if you drink that after coffee, it's not that bad. <laughs> I hate that. I can't stand the like feeling of it in my mouth and going down my throat. Mm -hmm. You know what? Things like that ain't hard for me because I mean, although I mean, it's hard going down, but if I can take anything or eat anything as long as I know it's good for me, yeah. Mm -hmm. So as long as I know that, I don't mm -hmm. care what it tastes like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get through it. Like I take this thing called Essence of Vitality, and um, it's bitter. It's nothing but bitters. Right, but it tastes horrible. Most people can't get it down, but I can drink it, and then it makes you go on the toilet for about you know eight to ten hours. Mm -hmm. But it's for, for, wait, at a time, eight to ten hours. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you're you, on the toilet for eight to ten hours. Well, you take it, so you take it to, um, you take it like two hours before you go to sleep. Right, you're not supposed to eat any proteins, just uh, beans, legumes, rice, whatever. And so, what happens is with me, because my system is so sensitive, I around about 11 15 11 30 i'm going so i'm gonna wake up in the middle of the night keep going keep going and then by the time i get up around probably eight o'clock uh, nine o'clock i probably done about 11. oh wow but it's worth it because you know it's as as much as sugar and savory stuff that we eat we're supposed to eat just as much uh bitter stuff mm. so yeah, yeah, it's balanced. God, why is there so many rules that we have to undo? It's just so yeah. Crazy. Well, say like, yeah, it's like relearning. Because when it so growing up, did you ha what was your health journey? Like, was, <laughs> did you eat whatever you eat? Just eat whatever, right? I'm from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So what was, right. like a what was like a typical? What was a typical day? What you guys were eating there? Uh, so, I mean, I cook, so I pretty much ate what I wanted to eat. So, I mean, either I get up in the morning and make pancakes, or I may make biscuits and gravy, or I make um. Uh, grits or oatmeal, and, but we ate a lot of grits too, though. Mm. And so, I mean, typical American breakfast with eggs and sausage and bacon and or deer sausage and stuff like that. Um, but then, if, after that, I mean, we really we didn't eat a lot of lunch. But for dinner, I made what I'll make fried chicken, I'll make steaks, I'll make um, 
yams, green beans. I mean, I make soul food pretty much for dinner all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean. It's phenomenal cook too man well you know what i'm saying chefing you know, it up man you know and yeah about, you heard, which man. is a great Still thing i remember cooked for me i got you no. i got you though i got yeah. you i promise i, I got you. i got you here. yeah because that's i feel like I'm, I'm really grateful to finally be the hypocrite that i am based on my whole <laughs> life because for so long because i had a fast metabolism and i could eat whatever i wanted to i'd be like work, like i work in a few different jobs in michigan but i would be like McDonald's for lunch, Wendy's for dinner, yeah. like whatever the case, just let me, you know, I'm like, oh, it doesn't matter what I eat. And then slowly but surely it caught up to me. Mm-hmm. And I remember even going to restaurants and like Paris would always talk about like you, you would be very particular about what he ordered. What do they cook that in? Can I have this? And I'd be like, come on, man, what the fuck? Dude, just order it. Just stop yeah. being like, don't be like this. Now you see me. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually I had to be like, are you guys cooking in olive oil? Okay. Because that's the other thing. Olive oil is... is if it's heated up, supposedly it might not be great for you. Mm-hmm. So it's like you can't cook an olive oil. Then you have to cook in something else. So like all these yeah. different rules. But based on yeah the different health journeys that that we've gone on, different things or autoimmune conditions that caught up to us. Yeah. But they also serve as like a um, like a nice red flag of like, hey, my body yeah. doesn't like this. So it's like a good thing if you look at it that way. Where now you know what you can eat, what you can't eat, and how how to move forward. So I had to do a massive reset. I know you did as well. Oh yeah, no. Um, so dealing with Hashimoto's has been like it has been it's been a journey because you go from being you know being fit. Like I've always been fit. I never stopped being fit, but I don't look fit no mm. more because of dealing with the Hashimoto's and. Uh, an understanding like, oh, so this affects your thyroid and your thyroid affects your metabolism and all these other stuff. And so it like, it, I'm so glad we're talking about it because I never really talked about it before. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, a lot of people don't know. So when I got a lot of friends with autoimmune situations and since, um, and um, it's autoimmune disease. That's what actually what it is. And so like, people don't understand like what that looks like or what that, uh, how, that how it affects you. Because I don't have no energy a lot of times. Like I wake up a lot of time, don't have no energy. I can sleep for eight hours, and don't have no energy, wow, right? Yeah. And people don't understand it. Like, well, you look healthy. Like, yeah, I know I look good, but I, you know. And then I'm even been self conscious for the last like last year and a half because I'm here. I'm always fit. I always got a six pack. My stomach look right, and now I'm over here walking around with extra fifteen to twenty five pounds. Like, and it won't go away. Mm-hmm. You know, so it really affects your 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 body image. It really affects uh, your personhood. It affects the way that you know you you you're being perceived, or you at least you think you're being perceived, right? Yeah. And so I I've, I've never really cared what nobody think about me, you know. I I, I still don't, but now it kind of get like, well, I find myself being I don't want to say insecure, but definitely self conscious about my appearance when it's like I mean I know I don't look fat, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. to me it's like, well, I'm not not I'm not I'm not 100 me, you yeah. know, and so. On the flip side, that affects your anxiety, um, your mood. So it affects your anxiety. It also affects your, uh, well, it affects um, your mood. So then I have anxiety. And also, I will also have depression at times, too, because of the flip side of anxiety is the depression. Mm. So it's like, so you battle all these different things that people don't even know that you, yeah. these are things that you really experience all while having an autoimmune condition. Mm-hmm. When did you first know that you had Hashimoto's? That, that's how what you say is it? Hashimoto's? Because I don't know what that is. So Hashimoto's, it's an autoimmune um, condition. It's like, it's where your, well, I don't know. All I know is it's thyroid. So it affects your thyroid. Mm-hmm. So I have thyroid issues. And on the flip, so at the root of it, it's the gut. But so your thyroid, it, it affects your mood, your sleep, your metabolism. It affects uh, all of your hormones, you know. And so me always being in fight or flight. Um, also, me also, um, and, and always having anxiety and always walking on eggshells, it really, I guess, so it, it also created an endocrine fatigue situation with my uh, endocrine system. Mm-hmm. And so, it depl- so when, you ain't, when, you're on, when you're on 10 you, and your body's always in fight or flight, it just creates this... Uh, Hostile environment. Yeah, and so you're, you're always on 10. Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> your, your endocrine system, your cortisol levels are through the roof. So, I mean, at some point, you're going to burn out, and yeah. that's what happened. Wow. And so I'm in the process of, now I know what it is, you mm-hmm. know, coming to the knowledge of that. Now I'm healing that through uh, diet and through um, supplements and mm-hmm. herbs yeah, and yeah. all that. And because did they try to put you on some kind of medication at some point? Well, they did. So they had to, had to take a, uh, it's a, I think it's Armour Thyroid. They put, me on, they put me on a couple of them, but some of them, it kind of affects you. But Armour Thyroid is really... Mm-hmm. Uh, 
the best one I've kind of experienced for okay. the moment. Yeah, because yeah. that's, the, that's the thing now, too, and that's what I really love about the internet, like finding these natural doctors and giving you the, the keys to figuring these things yeah. out. Um, and, uh, and then because you can be watching, you know, whatever on, on TV, and then some commercial comes in, like, oh, do you have psoriasis? <laughs> and all right, take this, and you might die. You might, you're going to have But not only swing. that, like these psori- the pharmacy commercials look like, a happy go lucky mm-hmm. day but it hasn't and whatever's depicted on the screen it seems like it has nothing to do with the medication it don't. yeah yeah it's just like uh, it's but, then, just but, then, but then you get to the bottom of the page this might kind of cause you to die it might your family might you might lose everybody in your family yeah, <laughs> you might lose like, the eye and the leg and the horn like, what <laughs> we're i guess we're one of two nations that allow those commercials what's the other nation is it canada I don't know if it is. I, I don't think Canada don't rock like that. Mexico, maybe? Or not Mexico, but like South America? No, I think it was South like, America? I, th- I want to say Sweden. I don't know. That might be wrong. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Sweden, of all places. That's what I'm saying. Interesting. Um, they jails look like it's Taj Mahal. I know. I kind of want to go to jail in, in Denmark or Sweden. <laughs> so good. See, I'm on Re- a foreign exchange. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the Reformation. Well, Reformation? Yeah. Reformation mm-hmm. is uh, top notch there. They actually rehabilitate their. Exactly. They're uh, um, prisoners. They got freedoms. Freedoms. <laughs> what? So, how did you find out that you had Hashimoto's? I uh, so it was during COVID. Um, you know, so I guess in that whole situation in itself, you know, so you already know you, you it's suspense. You don't know what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and then you see like when we're in the industry, so it's just like, what does that look like for us? And mm-hmm. so. Your lifestyle mm-hmm. and life, everything you know. So it just like I, I probably probably the most stressed I've ever been. And then so you know, no gyms are really open. So I would go to the track and and so I started doing my routine where I would go run like I would run like probably ten hundred meter sprints. I would run like another ten two hundred meter sprints stuff like that. I would normally do to get you know fit, but I wasn't getting lean. Like I was like <laughs> nothing was going away. I'm eating right. I'm working out at home and doing everything I'm you know I'm supposed to be doing and like. Ain't nothing going nowhere. And I was like, then I also realized, well, damn, I also don't feel, I don't feel like myself either. So mm-hmm. I started, um, so then that's when I went to the doctor and the doctor was like, oh yeah, you know, you just got um, your thyroid acting up. Well, we're going to put you on this. I'm like, okay. Thinking, okay, the pill is going to save my life. I'm like, I'm about to be back 100. And so I took one pill and my hair started falling out. I'm like, oh, 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 this ain't it. And so they put me on another one and then I felt better for maybe like a month. And then after that, it was just went back to status quo. Wow. Mm-hmm. Your body probably just got used to the medication to yeah. just stop yeah. working. Yeah. That's so and crazy. So New Zealand is one of the only countries besides the United States to allow direct-to-consumer advertising for prescription medications. That's that's crazy. I would have never thought that. It is like, it's it, it, that's and that's one of the things that, um, you know, we talked about like um, presidential candidates and yeah. all this, this stuff going on. But that's what it's like. I guess having a monarchy isn't it? Then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might just need to move uh, get it in the marketer. <laughs> you ain't lying. Yeah, so it's just it's just it's just wild the the world that we live in, and luckily because of everybody being able to communicate, we can at least yeah. get to the bottom of this stuff and say what well, what shouldn't happen in the future. So I have high, I have high hopes, and I'm grateful to be aware of these different things and see other people that and they, the fact that like dermatologists don't. Mm, yeah. give you any information on yeah. like okay change your diet change your this it's just take this prescription takes that and I, it's well, so I'm thing. kind of fortunate because I come from a family you know being in Mississippi and you know, a lot of them in um, Louisiana we've learned to really rely on herbs and stuff like yeah. that like my way my grandma um, and my mom and them the way they relied on like the stuff that's in nature like you know so I always knew it was an alternative so like going taking medicine was never like the first thing mm-hmm. for me, and so that's why I've been like searching out alternative health doctors, um, you know, people who you know, because because our American our health system is not designed to preserve life, yeah, yeah. No. at all. You know, that's why there's life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it goes against it, it. Literally goes against the system to to mm-hmm. want to say, hey, I'm feeling bad. Can you fix me? Mm-hmm. And so um, I I gave I lost hope in them. A long time ago, and yeah. so yeah, I just then you know, I started doing my own research, like you, and I just started okay, if this is what my condition, this is what I feel like, then how can I help this? So between Pinterest and uh, uh, friends of friends, I've been able to like you know put piece stuff together. It ain't all the way there, but for the most part, I've been able to 
you know, do the best I can with what I know. So yeah, yeah. yeah. My my biggest thing was like lifestyle switch up, because when I went for, when I and luckily I went to the right doctor. That when I went in, it was like oh, I'm, fat, I'm fatigued for weeks. Yeah. I haven't been able to overcome it. I don't know what's going on. Something's wrong with me. Yeah. She's like, all right, are, yeah. you, are you sleeping? I'm like, nah, I don't really sleep that well. Yeah, okay. Are you drinking? Co- how much coffee are you drinking a day? I don't know. Yeah. Probably like three or four. Sometimes mm-hmm. five cups. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> you, know, like, you think? <laughs> but I didn't think. Yeah. I didn't know because I was so used to how things used to be that yeah. I needed that. I needed someone to shake my worldview mm-hmm. so that I could change my mind and realize, oh, I'm killing myself on accident yeah. just because I, I'm, I'm I'm aging into something that my bo- and my body's getting worn down. Mm-hmm. So luckily, I went to the right person that didn't say, "All right, well, yeah, just pop this and you're yeah. you're good." So, um, you know, and that's a that's a that's a big part of like the evolution. That's why I always love our conversations. It always includes like, uh, um, like health, yeah, wealth, yeah, and like arts, yeah, and and just becoming the best versions of ourselves. I know we have a lot in common, wanting families, you know, and 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 um, yeah, just uh, having the best lives that we can, yeah. doing what we love and making money doing it. Um, so yeah, I always appreciate our conversations. Yeah. Now, likewise, likewise, but one, before we change, uh, before, before we pivot. Um, but one thing I have learned, uh, I guess in these last couple of years of dealing with uh, Hashimoto's is I've, I've learned to love each version of myself, right? And because we have, you have an idea of yourself and the way of this person that you want to present to the world. You know, as you get older and as things change or whatever the situation can be, you find yourself being, you know, judging yourself because, oh, I'm not this version of me anymore. And so, no matter, so a lot of times when you go through different things, there's a, just a certain version of you that that, that shows up and that mm-hmm. exists, or and that evolves that, into ex, it, uh, that expands too. you, or yeah. that you're comparing and you, to. that too. And so you find yourself doing all of the above, right? And I had to really learn how to accept myself, even at this place in my life, at this juncture, like my grandma say, juncture. Even in this juncture of my life, I had to learn to accept myself um, in ways that. I thought I did, but I did not, mm. you know? And so looking in the mirror and have a hard conversation, like, hey, I man, I love you still. I love yeah. this version of you. Like, shit ain't, yeah. you know, it, it, yeah, it, it yeah, gets yeah. real, you yeah. know? Yeah, and when you're at that place, because... And that's the hardest gonna, part. Yeah, this is kind of like a yeah, more on that. Well, no, I was just saying that's the, I think the hardest part uh, besides changing your lifestyle is learning to love and accept the version, the different mm-hmm. versions that yeah. you're the w- person that you're at, mm-hmm. or you know what I mean. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and that's and uh, it's in these different phases of our life because even when I first started acting, all of the roles that I was getting were because were shirtless. Yep. Now, you throw something, I can't be shirtless. I got psoriasis everywhere because of the years of like putting work in. But because because I couldn't be that actor, and that's uh, that's not the reason I stepped away from yeah. acting for a minute, but that's part of part yeah. of like what it became. So, I was forced to evolve maybe mentally or whatever the case in a in a different way that expanded me yeah. and then now eventually I have to overcome the psoriasis so I could get the clear skin when I do step back into acting to be able to have like a a, a leading role type of whatever and just be ready to take on the world but I can't right now because and I've lost opportunities because yeah. of that uh, but it's interesting how like yeah like how you can take it as a it's a negative thing and yes we have to overcome it but if you can appreciate who you are and how you're evolving because of the current state you're in and I would never be this knowledgeable about health absolutely um, if I didn't go through this and absolutely. now I can preach that to everybody else or you know tell you about coffee enemas <laughs> <laughs> but also learn how to cook learn oh how yeah I had to, to learn how to cook, cook. because. It, a lot of the time, I think, especially with your journey, Mark, was I want to get there, but I don't cook. And if I need something at convenience, I need to order something. And listen, that's just it. Listen, and I will I'm, come, that's my crutch. I will come over here at times. And the only thing Mark got in that refrigerator is some Coke and, and a Sprite and ginger ale, maybe. It's mm-hmm. a water. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Like nothing ketchup, in there. Maybe some ketchup or barbecue yeah. sauce. And some ranch. <laughs> But now I, 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 and so I, I came into the picture and started putting oh, real bro. food in his yeah, in his yeah. fridge. Hey, but then having one. to yeah, then having to like because every time I would go grocery shopping, I would have high hopes of what I could do. But then it would just I would end up overwhelmed waiting the last minute and mm-hmm. just go Uber Eats and something, and then everything else would spoil. Yeah. So now I found a nice routine where I'm using everything. I'm using all the bell peppers yeah. throughout the week, and I'm ordering 
sweet potatoes twice a week and the bananas and everything and just and it, yeah just opened up a whole new version of me that I didn't realize uh, how easy it was yeah it was not this big thing I actually could cook something quicker than if I order something it shows mm-hmm. up and you thought, and thought the of, opposite yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. oh uh, am I gonna wait 45 minutes to cook or 45 minutes to get this meal and it's quicker mm-hmm. it's for some reason yeah and, cheaper. and way cheaper too it's a uh, scripture in the Bible. It goes by, um, he, he, he who tills his land shall have an abundance of crops. Mm. And I think this is something that me and you both subscribe to. And when it comes to your manhood and, um, and just becoming the best possible, possible version of yourself, where you always look for different places in your, um, who you are in your existence and how can I come, how can I become better? And, you know, and it's crazy because you start to see like, you know, you see you see you when you was 20, you see who you are now. And you and you just see there's so much growth. And like I and I'm looking at you and it's like I see so much growth from the man who was living in the Lexus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, and to, and to now, you know what I'm saying? That joke was about to fall apart. <laughs> Almost <laughs> killed himself in that damn Lexus. Yeah. That but thing hey, but the... I tell you what, he did not look what he went through though. He did not look like what he went through. Because he didn't live in that reality exactly. in, in his mind. Yeah. And I, we talked about this on, a, I think another guest was on and he was like, oh, tell me about the bad stuff that has happened to you. And he didn't have anything to say. He's oh, like, oh yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was a, oh, it was very challenging experience. I was a guest on somebody else's podcast uh-huh. and his is, his is called, um, living in my mind. So he wanted to hear all the ups and downs of my whole life after moving to LA mm. and every part of it, he'd be like, okay, cool. So you went through this and then like, how did it feel when you're down in the, dumps with them yeah. but i i avoided all of those things because i would just i would just take it as a chip or whatever on my shoulder i'd be like all right yeah. watch this watch what i can yeah. do i would never so eventually i had to deal with a lot of that stuff it just packed up in the back of my brain but anytime i'd feel like i couldn't do something i just no watch this and kept pushing forward so it was a really great like um like foundation of like who i am that but i didn't realize that that's what i did yeah. and how it could potentially affect me ne- negatively down the road because eventually if you're not dealing with any of those little those little things you're just pushing them to the back of your mind yeah. eventually you're gonna have to detangle some yeah. of that but that's also what propelled me of so course. like our it, therapist says yeah. you needed those uh dif- those mechanisms before it worked for you yeah. but now it doesn't it doesn't work for you anymore yeah i love yeah. that so um they always they always deal with stuff like that in billions i love that tv mm. show I but um it. i need to watch it you can, I guess it's in the last season. You gotta watch it. Um, oh, good, but you have to binge. Yeah, of course. But no, I guess. Um, so your ego is always gonna create ways for you to survive. Yeah, right. And so that's all those things is just your ego just you're just creating ways for you just to survive, and you're using those those mechanisms to to I guess further your cause, right? Or further like the call your call your 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 um your mind and arms and we're gonna we're gonna go do this right the champion these things and it's crazy because those things work to get you there but those things can't keep you there yeah because they become demonstrative and destructive because of what they're rooted in and they're not rooted in accomplishment it's rooted in fuck you to be Mm -hmm. real with you (laughs) and that that fuck you was developed being a short kid in high school that couldn't actually fight with his fists so he had to talk shit with his words and and then which i'm really grateful for you know how i grew up because i part of that foundation is right, i'm gonna prove you wrong watch Incompetence. what i can do mm-hmm. yeah yeah i'm a over i'm gonna I'm show mm-hmm. you because i w- couldn't compete with the other guys because they yeah. were bigger than me so I was like okay yeah. watch what i can do watch and then i eventually grew up but if you keep on saying fuck you <laughs> it's not good when you get to an argument exactly with, a, with your girlfriend <laughs> yeah that's not that's not that's that, that, that little cut. guy right because <laughs> yeah, that little guy inside me is mm-hmm. you know so that's but luckily that's another thing with the growth i'm so grateful for the people that i'm surrounded by like yourself where no, we look f- to seek those different things when to detangle them. Yeah. And um, uh, w- actually, you know, um, one of the things that I know you did, you did some of the uh, to be magnetic work, right? Uh huh. Um, so one of the girls, not the lead girl, but her, her I guess, business partner, she came in as, into a, oh, a, a, a podcast guest somewhere else. Where else? Natalie's uh, yeah. ground up, ground up with Nat. Oh, yeah. I, love, I love Nat. Yeah. So she was, so she was on, but I was telling Jai about it. Cause you know, as we're going to therapy, a couple's therapy and then therapy individually as well. Um, and really expanding all that, but uh, the to be magnetic <laughs> was, I remember you did it. <laughs> I'm floored, but keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. What? No, I'm just, couples therapy. Oh yeah, it's been amazing. It was really great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when you when you work together and you're in a relationship and you're living together, it's a lot of like blurred 
the lines get blurred so yeah. Many yeah. so we had many we had little things peeking peeking their heads but it was also like okay we don't want that to grow into fully <laughs> Full, like full um, like distractions yeah. or no, pillars they have to jump over. So, so yeah, we found this amazing couples therapist, and uh, it's funny, you know, some people we tell because we're, we're like I said, I'm so <laughs> vocal about everything. <laughs> but we want so people are like, wait, you guys not doing well? Like, no, no, we're doing fantastic. Yeah. But we want to ensure that down the line, that's beautiful. Man. Yeah, it's been boundaries really are made to keep people in your life, mm-hmm. not. Out your life, mm-hmm. and but I need people use to them wrong. That. The people who use boundaries in the wrong way are keeping or using them to keep people out. Exactly, and that just keeps people out. Exactly, you mm-hmm. got so many walls up that you're not allowing. And others some people to can't create boundaries and don't know how to draw boundaries. So that was infiltrating into our relationship too, because I can't tell people I don't want to ever let anybody down. So I'm like, hey, no, no, you can stay as long as you want. Do what you got to do. And she'd be like, I thought we were doing dinner like a date night tonight. Like, yeah, well, they didn't leave yet. Like, tell yeah. them to leave. I'm like, ah, yeah, I can't. So I can't do that. Um, and like clients and stuff, friends, I, I couldn't. But now, and she's been really helpful and obviously our therapist, but like drawing those boundaries so mm-hmm. that I could protect myself and become the best version. Because I've been, that's what I mean. That's why I got two phones. Was, that was a big boundary thing, too. A great pick. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> um, but so that was a big step in my boundaries. But now I've been able to draw them where, where I've been able to see where it's necessary. And I see that it's hard. But I also see why well, I don't want to let, let people down. How that golden child syndrome that I like developed in my head growing up and mm-hmm. not want to be perceived as the best version of myself mm-hmm. always. And I don't ever fuck up anything. I'm like, oh, shit. Detangling yeah. all of that. And it all makes sense. And I love when shit makes sense. It's really it's those breakthroughs are life changing. The pieces start start getting joined together. Yeah, like mm-hmm. oh, the bigger picture starts happening. Yeah, yeah. That was the biggest thing for me: people pleasing and not um, and not wanting to or feeling hold up, feeling responsible for other people's feelings, mm-hmm. and not wanting to let anybody down, and also not or oh, trying to protect someone from experiencing negative emotions, but with, by the by the byproduct being me looking out for myself. And so me being me, okay, me respecting myself or me um, loving myself and saying no to you or saying no to this relationship, saying no to this friendship or no, I can't show up for you this way now. Or so I, I didn't want people to feel or experience any form of negative negative emotions because of me. Mm-hmm. I remember I broke up with a girl back in like tenth grade or something and I had say, Hey, can we meet and talk? I saw it on the movie. And um <laughs> No, <you can't. laughs> he starts going through the script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I saw it on the movie, whatever. So I called, I said, Hey, can you meet me at the mall? Oh man, I loved her to death. She was so nice to me. Um, she said, "Meet me at the mall." Uh, me, it's, it's going, going down. down. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "Why are you saying it like right, that?" Right, bro. So <laughs> we, uh, so we met. We sat on the bench, and I said, I, "Look, I mean, you know, I like you to death, but uh, it's not really working for me right now. I'm going to college. You know, this other stuff is changing. I'm not really know what's going on." And she cried so hard, and I felt so bad, like. I'm like, cause I'm like, I mean, I liked her, but it was yeah. just, it just wasn't working for the time being, mm. whatever. And that marred me, wow. like seeing her tears and her crying. That I, that that wasn't um, the only thing. That probably wasn't the first thing, but that was the first instance I saw when I attempted to do something like that, mm. and that was the which was the right thing to do, but your perspective on what happened impacted how you mm-hmm. dealt with things later on in life. And then so, exactly. And so from henceforth, I shied away from those hard conversations. Start ghosting mm-hmm. everybody? I, I never really, <laughs> I never ghosted. No, no, no. I would, I would. You just don't talk about what's bothering you yeah. because you don't, you're trying to avoid the conversation in general. Exactly. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm I, so I probably stayed places too long. Mm. Um, mm. I'm, Preach. I'm the king of staying in places too long, being or being associated with people for too long, allowing things to exist for too long for the sake of peace, no, not having conflict um, or not having to hurt anyone's feelings. Yeah. And it, my, my favorite thing about therapy is like moments like that, right? Where in the moment 
you you were doing the right thing. Um, so I, I, I think I'll call it like a perspective switch, right? One of our last sessions, we were talking about, um, you know, why I am the way I am right now, right? And there was one uh, particular situation in a past relationship where we got into an argument and I stayed in the room, was just pissed off. She slept on the couch and I heard her crying the whole night. And I was just mad. I was like, I ain't going fucking out there. Fuck this shit. And th that situation, the next however long, has impacted me negatively because I was like, man, I can't believe I was that kind of person. I should have just got up and said something. Not because I wanted to save the relationship because like that's what a nice person, person does, do. right? Yeah. But in therapy, when I talked about this, the perspective switch is what I love is that she was like, well, you know, you had a reason to be upset. You can be mad and go through your feelings too. And just because she's crying doesn't mean you have to go save her everywhere. And I was like, so in an instant, a switch went from a negative to a, oh, I did do the right thing. All this time I've been holding on, and not like it's always on my mind, but it's somewhere that I would reflect on every once in a while. Like, man, I guess I, should, I can still hear her crying. Why didn't mm -hmm. I just go and say something to be a nice person? Yeah. But I needed to, in that moment, I was mad. I needed to go through my different exactly. um, emotions as well. And that's crazy you say that because when you, so when you grew up like that, and I grew up in a pretty, uh, uh, abusive home so you know you decide how you're going to survive that situation however but you still but so but the way that you navigate things is from the age of your womb and so I would navigate things from the 10 year old little scared little boy mm. you know or I'll make decisions from that place too and so you find yourself but then you don't realize that you're so busy being in protective mode and you're so busy um, being um, or trying to be the best person to everyone that you don't like you I get to feel too. Mm -hmm. Like I get to I get to decide how I, I need feel. To feel. <laughs> and I don't ha I don't have to feel based I don't have to feel a certain way based off of your feelings or what I think you need to feel at that moment. Like mm -hmm. I have a right to preserve myself and save myself. And once I realized that and took the autonomy back and be like, "Oh, wait. It's it's not about her liking me, but do I like her?" Mm -hmm. You never think about it. That's that's I guess that's something that we had uncovered was be bending to other people's feelings and their emotions so easily and so much throughout your life t tends to have you like an give you an identity crisis when you're mm -hmm. when you're much older like mm -hmm. oh where what do I like what do mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. what do I do in situations like this how do I feel I'm allowed to feel this way I'm allowed to not feel like I have to say sorry or I have mm -hmm. to, you know what I mean? Yes. No, I'm, oh. So you have to do so many, so much unlearning and identifying like who I am. If, mm -hmm. if you're lucky enough, because a lot of people never unlearn anything and they stay in that same well, box. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a paradigm of being a victim. Uh, and it's crazy. It's so mm -hmm. many, it's so many people out there and it's not even, because I don't really operate in judgment, but you realize the more you heal and the more you grow, on this journey and the older we get the air becomes thinner there's less and less people who have the who's had the luxury or even the um the uh, opportunity to even come into the awareness of i need to heal mm -hmm. and so and you see that through your relationships as you go whether i mean and this is all kind of shit friendships uh, work um, relationships intimate relationships whatever and you start to see oh this person's perspective oh you you need to heal or you need to do the work and but also you realize I can't be in union with you. I can't be in partnership with you. I cannot be in a relationship with you because you have not done the work and you're not where I'm at. Not from a haughty place of I'm mm -hmm. better than you. And but I want you to get there. Yeah, but it's it's gonna if I work with you, it's gonna breed nothing but dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we're coming together, it's not gonna we're not gonna reach our, our common goal because you haven't done the work yet. And mm -hmm. so therefore you can't be in um, union with me. In, in, in any shape, form, or fashion. And now I stand on that because it's not it's not the water that's outside the ship that sinks it. It's the water that's mm. inside the ship that gets inside that sinks the ship. And once people start to understand that and the and the holes in that ship is the insecurity, is the holes in that in that ship is the wounds, the, the childhood wounds, the things you never came to grips with. Um, your ideologies, your um, your your belief systems, um, the way that just just your core beliefs, all those things are what 
create holes in those sh- in that ship if yeah. it's not properly formed they haven't been healed they haven't been fixed or um you haven't done the work mm-hmm. yeah you know well i've never thought about it that way too of like yeah it, like ensuring the people that you're in conversation or in business or whatever kind of partnership that you're in to ensure that they're on that same that same path of of finding mm-hmm. themselves and overcoming these things i'm gonna raise you one have you seen the documentary on Wham yet? On what? On Wham. Wham? No. Wham. Oh, oh, no, I haven't yet. It's so good. It's I so good. I would like to watch that. Uh, it's so good. You know, my mama was a big George Michael fan, so I grew up, you know, this Christmas. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But so when, so as the group got, became larger and they became more and more successful, um, the, I can't remember the other guy outside of George. Uh, George was the more was the better writer, right? He was the better he was the better performer. He was the better uh, singer and a better writer. And the, in order for them to go further, he was going to have to write the songs. And the other group mate couldn't write the song, which was a big b- blow. But he knew what was in order for us to go where we want to go. Yeah, we're going to have to do that, right? We're going to make I'm going to have to make that sacrifice. And then on top of that, but he was still like the 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 style, the the energy of the group was the other group member, right? Mm. Um, but it, it got to some point where everyone knew that, okay, George has to go and be on his own now. It's like, we're going to have to break up. We're going to have to do this. And, oh, boy, he was so, like, he is a testament to not being self-centered, to being having a, being able to be selfless. And But those are the type of people that you want to be in business with. They're like, no, what's best for the group? What's best yeah. for this script? What's best for this project? What's best for our relationship? Mm-hmm. Being able to be able to decide and remove ego and being like, I'm just as good as right as you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're good, but yeah. you're not George Michael. And yeah, to yeah, be yeah. able to like in, in, in the, and do that in front of the world to see, like that's that's the most humble thing you could ever it do. Doesn't, it but, mostly doesn't happen. But it takes awareness of self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's times, I mean, me and Shake be working together and he um he has an idea, I have an idea of like, you know what? That's the better idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm gonna relinquish, like, why am I keep fighting? Because I'm gonna fight because I want my idea to win, even I though it's be not the better. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't give a care about that. All my friends are smarter than me. I surround myself around people who are smarter than than me if i'm doing the most talking in the room it's a problem mm. Mm. unless i'm you know we just we know we ain't seen each other we catching up or whatever and, yeah 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 but you i could you're smarter than me and i love that because i come to you and be like mark what you think about this you one of the main people i come to if i have a situation especially in the industry i'm coming mm-hmm. to you well i'm gonna call check mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but like, what you think about this and that's on, yeah certain things because then i'll come to you for other things that i'm like you're smarter you know? than me and it's like you know? yeah but i know we can have those things to to then come to the awareness of whatever like to find the answer exactly. or to find the best strategy or what to how to move forward based on previous experiences or how we know that's huge um self-awareness is so key but then um, you, so when, when you when you interweave that with your relationships you start to see like oh like are you selfless can like you know when when, when is, is there going to come a point in time can you relinquish that that idea or that right to feel like you have to be right and so, but people who haven't, he hasn't done the work yet, you know, it, 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 it creates holes in the yeah. ship, man. They don't have the tools yet. To they don't have the to tools them. yet. Yeah. And meanwhile, and also, cause they don't think the way you do, they don't have done the work that you've done. So, and you, then you can't, cause you can't expect you from them. Yeah. Yeah. Cause him, because then it's not a proactive conversation. It's not. You're not moving anywhere. You're, you're the one person is stagnant, and you're trying to, you know, push against this wall that isn't going to move because yeah, they they're not can. trying to see whether they're wrong. No. Or and it's, it's the it. it's the equivalent of talking to a five year old. Ever yes. try to talk to a five year old about why they did what they did? I don't know. Yeah. yeah but that's yeah. the same thing that adults do all the time, and they don't know because they're, they're the same age of their womb, right? Mm. And meanwhile, I'm up. To, I can say, hey, listen. I feel like this. I feel like you are hurting my feelings. I feel like you don't understand what I'm going through. And I, I statements. I statements. You know, I feel not you are or you are doing. Or you are making me feel. You, no, I I'm, feel. I'm using all clinical terms now, but we know what that means because why? We've been in therapy. <laughs> we read books. We do the self-help thing. We have these, these, these We've awareness. Done the work. We've yeah. done the work. But if I say that to someone who grew up in a um, troubled home who had uh, uh, a chaotic uh, childhood or relationships or just in that kind of world, they're going to take that as you saying, 
I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And it's, it's just going to come from a blame. It's going to mm-hmm. come from a victim. No accountability. It's gonna, you're talking to a wall exa- at that point. That's the point I'm making. Yeah. I'm talking to and a so wall. when you're in situations like that with people, then that's when you have to realize like, dang, I can't be in any kind of union with you. I can't be any type of work. I can't be in a partnership with you. It's more of it's got to be like a mentorship is of some of some sort where like, hey, when you're ready for this, yeah, then like then I'm, I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Hey. Yeah. yeah. I'm here. I'm available when you're yeah. ready. When you do the work, I'm right here. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm waiting for you. I'm rooting for you. I want mm-hmm. you to win. I even and think about it is it's not like a place of get away from me. Uh no, it's like no. If you want to do the work, hey, I grab your hand. Come on, mm-hmm. I, I show you the way. I can't do it for you now. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't fix yes. you. I oh, can't God. save you. I, but I can grab your hand. Hey, you need to do X, Y, and Z. Go get you a therapist. Hey, read this book. Um, sit quietly. Start journaling. Start, you know, um, start taking account of your thoughts. Yeah. You know, why do you feel why do you feel? Why do you do what you do? Like. I I can I can walk you with it. I can yeah. I can be I could be a support, but I can't do it for you. Yeah, yeah. I've I've had some really great conversations now. Like, um, in like 2015 is when I finally flipped that switch for me, where it was like, okay, I need to work all the time to get to where I want to go because I've been wasting a lot of time. Now I need to move forward. I need to learn from that. And then you know that's where I cut out most of my friends, and that's you know unless we're working on something, and that's what I would say. Like, hey, if we're not like we're gonna go to the bar. No, we're working on something. If we're not working on something. I'm not doing it. And and a lot of those those people would get upset cut to eight years later they get it now and they would even say man i remember back back when when you were living out of the lexus but you were saying hey if we're not working then we can't we can't hang and and, but they didn't understand it at the time Mm -hmm. now they want now they want to put the work in and now it's great to be around those people i'm like i'm glad that you've that you've arrived let's let's get to work welcome welcome to the fold yeah 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 and this is where it gets really fun this is not those short-term little, went out to the bar, got drunk, hooked up, whatever. Oh, my God, that was so fun. Can't wait till next weekend to do that yeah. again. Or in Hollywood, every night of the week. Yeah. Now it's, and, and I saw uh, John Mayer said something about this. When he stopped drinking and start, stopped partying and everything, he had like one final uh, moment at Drake's house on his birthday party, and he made a fool of himself. And he said once he realized he was going to stop drinking, at first, instead of having those highs, everything kind of goes to the ground. But if you work hard enough at that ground level, eventually that whole ground floor goes to the top. Mm-hmm. Now your whole life's up here. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, that's fine. That's yes, fine. Dope. Exactly right. Um, I remember that conversation. I remember, I'll never forget. I think, I don't know if we was in acting class. We were somewhere and you said something about, you came to a reali- realization with yourself and you was like, oh, I'm working hard enough. And you're like, no, are we really working hard enough? Like, am I really doing everything that I can possibly do to ensure my success or my growth? And you came to a realization like I'm not. And so until then, I feel like that. Then I'm cutting everything out. I remember that conversation. Yeah. And then, but it made your introspection made me become introspective and be like, I, I'm working hard enough. I'm doing enough. I think. Yeah. I think. I? Oh God, I, that I'm I kind of. Yeah. Uh, I'm not working hard enough. I'm not doing everything that I could do in my day. I'm not maximizing the time each day that I have to 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 be or become the version of myself and to accomplish the things that I want to do. And from that hit from that day forth, I literally woke up every day on purpose. Wow. And I've been able to accomplish so and I have become obsessively uh, maniacally obsessed with tilling my own land and controlling what I can control. And with that, for me, it was writing, you know, and me just become maniacally obsessed with understanding everything when it comes to writing and becoming a better version of myself. And also you having discipline, because I believe discipline is freedom to be able to really just, you know what, if, I, if this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it every day and be able to write so many scripts um, and, and also to bet on myself even more because I because now I got the discipline and now I got the the knowledge and know that, hey, I am good at this. Oh, you you saw the TV show. Oh, you know what the hell you doing? Like mm-hmm. not that I need an external validation, but to really just make myself into this machine that can't be stopped um, when it comes to writing, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you bring value everywhere you go. Yeah. You're not coming in asking for opportunities. No. You're bringing products to the table. Absolutely. And I'm like the dude from coming to America after he stole Eddie Murphy's uh, bag. Um, uh, uh, what you call it? His bag. He came. He was like, hey, what you want? 
<laughs> you know, I got I got all kind of stories. What do you want? And I said, you know, I'm going to master this just like I master a- acting. Yeah, I put my thousand hours in acting. I put my thousand thousand hours in when it came to writing. You know, I think you're over a thousand. I'm I'm, I'm way over a thousand now. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. But you know, but it, 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 it's it's mastery, yeah. right? So I, 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 ever since that moment, I devoted myself to mastery, whether it was spiritually, whether it was mentally, whether it was uh, my dream, my craft, um, and even in my friendships and relationships, man. Yeah. And so it just, and it, it, even, and so that moment propelled me to making the ultimate sacrifices because your sacrifice really inspired me at that moment because I remember. You was just like, hey man, by any means necessary, I'm just gonna get it. And I had I've always been like that, but I got kind of comfortable being out chill when you making you you bartending making over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, you being able to buy what you want and do what you want, uh, built the old school, <laughs> yeah. you know, stuff like that. But my but my active friends that were progressing were just like, there's a quit your job. I'm like, I can't quit my job. Meanwhile, they're in network and they're able to put themselves in situation because they wasn't really working like that. They wasn't, you know, needing that type of comfort, right? But I did, not that I came from that, but I've created this little, this little bubble since after Hurricane Katrina. And I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna be asked out again. You know, I'm yeah. gonna be safe. I'm gonna protect me. And but I was losing it on the other end when it came to my career. And so I decided. And that was 2018 when my when my bar closed. That I wasn't gonna get another job, and the next job I get is gonna be from me working in my field, whether it's me as an actor or whether it's me as a writer. And that was 2018. It's 2023. I am proud to announce that I have not worked another job since then. But I am proud to, uh, proud to announce it's been harder than a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have I've cried. I have lost people relationships i have i have seen beautiful days i've seen some of my darkest days betting on myself um but i have and but with that being said i have created this this machine this this fortified um well healed and oiled person that i could not have created um, if I never made that decision to do so. Only way that you become a guru is through pain and experience. And if you don't experience life and life doesn't happen to you, then how are you going to have the wisdom or the, uh, uh, or the antidote or answer to the world's problem? That's what made Gandhi and them so dope. That's what made MLK them so dope is that the, the vicissitudes of life, uh, the the misery, the pain, the scores, the skullduggery, all those things that we experience in our in our not so great seasons uh, is what fuel all those things that that makes you who you are, your accomplishment, but also to be able to help others, you know. And so one thing for me, I always ask myself, what season of life I'm in. Because once you understand what season of life you're in, then when things start to happen that coincide or or or, or, or looks like that season, you're not going to think it's strange. Like, oh, I'm in this season right yeah. now. So you already know the forecast. So if I'm in the season of building, then you're in the season of building. If you're in the season to plant, then you're in the season to plant. If you're in the season to reap, then you're in the season to reap. But you know the fruit by, you know, by, you, know you know the tree by its fruit. And you know the fruit by the, this was hanging on the leaf on the, and was falling to the ground. Mm. And so people don't understand that about life, and they don't understand why. Why is this happening to me? Well, what season are you in? Yeah, yeah. And if if you can understand what's happening to you and how you can benefit from it by going through it, then you would do it. And that's what I love about like. First of all, you should just mic dropped after that. Whole <laughs> I thing. know. I, was, I was just was like, <laughs> like, we got to clip that <laughs> <laughs> part one, part two, part three. Um, so that was beautiful, man. But Thank I think, you. and that's the thing is like once. My biggest problem before I came to that conclusion that I wasn't working hard enough mm-hmm. was because I didn't, I thought I was working hard enough. And once I realized how much hard work it actually takes to succeed, then I was able to move forward and make make a lot of um, things that I wanted to come true and then be able to tell other people about that. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing about you living in a, a lifestyle where you make $100,000 a year and you're auditioning and doing, doing your thing or whatever and acting class or what have you. 
it's a nice little fluffy bubble to be in. And yeah, mm-hmm. you'll get you'll get some like some yeses and some noes and those noes might chisel you a little bit based on like not getting a job and then eventually getting something and like it's a nice little fluffy area you're in. Yeah. But once you real once you once you dedicate yourself to a specific purpose, now every no that hits you is like, oh damn. Yeah. It didn't get that. Yeah. Oh, it, and it, you don't have this fluffy thing to fall into. Yeah. And it chisels you into the person that you're supposed to become. And if you can chisel yourself into that person, then you can go out to war and you can go fuck shit up. And then now that's where, you know, luck happily in this place where this table, even this is the table that we sat. At two, <laughs> we sat in my place <laughs> when I first bought this. I spent all the money I had on yeah. these two microphones, and um, and we sat down a similar gray wall in a in a in a one bedroom, a three bedroom townhouse with two roommates, and I made my bedroom the office. We yeah. were sitting just like this during yeah. the pandemic, like let's talk about you know what's going on in the world. And we actually had those conversations. And that's why, like, you know, having this table and this is following me everywhere and, and will continue to follow me everywhere I go. But I was just as happy then as I, as I am now because I was aligned and mm-hmm. I was in the game that I wanted to be in. I wasn't faking it like I was before. And I wasn't I wouldn't even say faking it. I would just say I just didn't didn't have the wherewithal to understand how to go about what I wanted to. But once you can crack that code and you can understand the business and the creative and you can understand how long it takes and how much hard work it takes and you actually dedicate yourself to only that. People are gonna tell you you need work life balance, you need this, you need that. But if you if they don't know, if they don't have they what don't you want, they you don't cannot know. listen to anybody that doesn't have what you want. <laughs> and that's it. Boy, I punch you right now. Uh, <laughs> no, for real. Like most people don't understand what sacrifice looks like. And if they do, they only can see it from their own perspective. And most people don't make that much like major sacrifices. My a sacrifice may, I'm not gonna have no gummy bears today. Or you know what? I'm not drinking for a week. Oh my God. You know, you know, but <laughs> we're talking about we're talking about dedication to mastery. That's the title of this podcast, by the way. <laughs> like the dedication to that. And what does that mean? What does that look like? How do I achieve mastery? Mm-hmm. Pain. And it's so crazy. I've been mentoring uh, kids. I love that. Yeah, we're um, talk about that you know, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I miss my kids already. I miss my babies. I feel. I see what teachers feel like mm-hmm. now. Um, so I've been mentoring uh, kids uh, and kids in the spotlight. Shout out to kids in the spotlight. Yeah, you know, they them. have been blessing to me. And Kualima, my friend, she put me on game. So thank you, Kualima, too. Yeah. Me teach kids how to act and write. Y'all got to be loud and lost y'all damn mind, right? <laughs> and so but I find myself talking to them and seeing them. And I remember when I was on the beginning part of my journey, right? And all of a sudden I have all this, this whole well storm of information and guidance. That you wish you had at that level. Mark, what's the first thing you think I tell them kids? Oh, you want to act? You want to be in this business? Learn how to write your own stuff. Well, I don't know how, you can. Baby, I'm from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I ain't go to Harvard. I ain't go to NYU. I ain't go to Yale. I ain't, I taught myself how to write. We taught ourselves how to write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we knew we, we had talent to act, but, mm-hmm. you know, to become a boss and to, to really just. And, and having ideas is one thing. Having some good ideas is cool. And like, we, I think we were already there. Mm-hmm. That, and, but once you start writing. Yeah. And you see the challenge it is to finish one script. Hell, finish a dope scene. <laughs> Then, but you slowly get better and you start writing dope shit quicker. Yeah. And then you can, you start uh, not falling into some of the pitfalls mm-hmm. that you've fallen before because you know, oh no, let's not, let's do it this way. Mm-hmm. But yeah, go. Keep no, going. no, I, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And so now I have this, I can give them on mm-hmm. top of life about being homeless. And this, I've been homeless too, too. I feel like I'm Paul from the Bible now. I've been homeless twice, <laughs> maybe three times. I don't know if I want to count the last time, but I was count, I was homeless at least twice, dog. Not knowing where you're gonna eat, not knowing where you're gonna live, not understanding what tomorrow is going to look like, mm-hmm. but you wake up with your best, putting your best foot forward and optimistic. Like we, I think we, we've always been optimistic, no matter how bad it's gotten. Yeah, luckily, luckily, and like, yeah. And you, you've learned how to navigate this journey because the journey is the destination. You learn how to navigate this journey, like being hurt, um, but not being wounded. You know, being able to take these licks, but not let, allowing it to affect your psyche. You know, not the, not not allowing it to affect your 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 fervor, your uh, your drive, or your just your grasp on this thing that I'm saying that I'm going to do. 
you know, and so, but me being able to mentor those kids and like and a lot of them, they have their own, they come from all kinds of various backgrounds, you know, mm-hmm. but me being able to be the man that I am and now I got all this information I can give them about life, about this craft. And it's like, oh, not even to mention like <sighs> by life, being a creative person, I feel like is, is the biggest gift that I, that I've been given yeah. from God and universe, whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. because I'm able to take all of these moments, these negative moments, painful moments, amazing, happy moments Mm -hmm. and put it into art and to create something. If you don't have something to like, and that's where writing, whether it's the worst poem of all time, write it. And guess what? If you can't write it, okay, cool. You can come up with a concept or can you find somebody else that can have a concept and you can bring some other sort of efficiency mm-hmm. to the project to get it done. Mm-hmm. Okay, how do we start piecing that stuff together? Because if you can be creative, you can find a way to be creative through your own songwriting or poem writing or just script writing mm-hmm. or just writing in a journal. Or if you could tell those things to somebody else and have them write them, if you can turn your negative moments in life into something beautiful, then that just that it just creates a, a beautiful world to live in. Find a conduit. It's yeah. it's all just a conduit to get our emotions and and feelings out. Absolutely, because what's the opposite? <laughs> Keeping Keep it, it in. Uh, a dream Letting deferred. Uh, uh, I feel. I don't know about you or y'all. I feel like, and people understand. Like, well, Dara, how can you just write every day? It's like I can't stand having an idea that's in my mind. Like, if I don't get it out, after a while, it just starts to like. I don't know. I just my, my system feels clogged. Mm. I feel like I can't move. I feel like I can't breathe. Like I have to get this idea out of me. Yeah. Right. And that's how I feel. You know. And it's. But that's why I also think, and I, I um, I, I said this on another podcast, I think, but it was like, if you are somebody that's creative, and everybody has ideas, everybody has creative ideas that oh, I think this should be a movie. This should be a TV show. Okay, cool. Yeah, we get it. But to actually put that into action and make it come true to or to 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 its completion, to be able to present to the world, if you become that person, and the universe is giving everybody all these ideas, and most people aren't taking them into putting them mm-hmm. into something, if you become the like the trusted source to put the ideas out, you're going to continue getting more yeah. ideas to push through into the world. Yeah. So if you're taking them and putting it on the paper and putting it out to the world, then that's just going to bring more to the table as well. We're alchemists. That's I just, exactly I just read Darkness for the first time last month. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've, been, I've been meaning to read it, but I've never, I never, I never read it. <sighs> and I find, and I was like, those gems. That's my favorite book. Wow. I yeah. probably read I need it. To read once, it. I read it. I've once been a year. reading others, uh, like the subtle art of not giving a fuck, I read that which one is too. amazing. Yeah. Have you read part two yet? I haven't. I have, so I'm good. going to. I'm going so to. But good. that book actually changed. That felt like a big old light switch in my mind. Like absolutely a big light switch. The second one would be the courage to be disliked. And it's really about Ooh. a certain it's a Japanese philosopher who talks about um, having the courage to just be be you. And it's like the hardest thing. Yeah. Um, and it shows you by the end of the book how that courage gets formed. How, how can you form yourself into a better human being by having the courage yeah. to be disliked? Mm-hmm. Really, and then really after good. and then afterwards, you can't. How can you? You can't even picture a world not being that version because mm-hmm. it's addicting. Once you be it to be exactly who you are, and you don't give a fuck about what anybody else thinks. Women in their in their forties, uh, <laughs> 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 they're like, "Fuck you guys." No, for this. real. No, for real. Well, no. What was your favorite lesson from the Alchemist? I mean, there's so many. Man, there's so many. Um, I want to say it was the one with the one with the girl. Um, because he fell in love with her, but he was hell bit on possessing her. And he didn't understand that the love that he experienced with her and for her wasn't to be owned, but to be appreciated. Mm. And so that was one for me. Um, also, I think, uh, oh man. <sighs> What's what's the one when he got to the uh, when he met the actual alchemist? Um, I can't remember. It's, it's, it's starting. I, I wrote down like my my ten ten moments as I was reading. I'm gonna do a, a video on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I I love the um well when he went to the the like the 
wisest man's house yeah, yeah. with a spoon mm-hmm. and uh, not to drop anything off the spoon. And then he missed everything that was around him. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, there's, but it was just like, especially towards the end, just gem after gem after gem after gem. And uh, or like, not, yeah, you don't trust anybody. You don't know what their house looks like or mm-hmm. whatever they're saying. Um, oh, that's so smart. No. I wish you should know that when dating. You should have yeah. known that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not with you. I knew what your house looked like, but mm-hmm. it's just crazy. Yeah, no, yeah. so, I mean, being a creative, and especially in these times when we have so much access to being uh, in so much uh, things that we can help, uh, mechanisms and tools to help us become creative and be creative, um, and understanding that we're all alchemists, man, in life and in art. And li- art imitates life and life imitates art. And so learning how to be an alchemist with everything, anything that life throws us and, 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 and not being afraid to be disliked. Cause then what happens is you remove yourself from judgment and being judged yourself or someone judging you. Mm -hmm. And you're able to stand on who the person that you decided that you're going to be, that you're going to decide to become the art that you decided that you was going to make. And so once you decide those things, it's easy because once I once you read my script and you are an exec or you are someone want to give me notes or you someone you want my my script if you want me to change this or you want me to change that I'm like no this is the story. I mean you had to do that many of times like no this is the this is the program this is what we're gonna do this is the vision if you are a part of it cool if you're not it's okay I I, I can't do this deal with you. I, I you know what I don't believe in this, or I, I can't do it this way. In order for this deal to go through, I need X, Y, and Z. And so what happens is you become this person that doesn't care what you look like in their story, or in whatever form of fashion. And so now you're able to sit there and be like, "This is me, mm-hmm. bitch." Yeah. I mean, it's, all yeah. a, it's all up for interpretation. You can't trust how people interpret everything. You yeah. can't. No, but why? Why care? I used to be so concerned with people disliking me, not even disliking me, being the bad guy in somebody's story. Mm. But you know what, though? And even the piggyback on the um, probably about 25, 30 minutes ago is not let, allowing people to feel negative emotions or trying to save people from feeling those emotions or those negative experiences with you. They probably needed that. That's probably that's part of their story. Mm. That's they need those moments more than any other moment in their life. And that's one thing like, um, and we were talking about like entrepreneurship and stuff too. I want to make sure, cause as she started her company and stuff too, I didn't want to give, like if there was any moment where I didn't want to steal the blessings that she would get by going through something to realize mm-hmm. like if, it, okay, we lost a client on this or whatever the case, like, Oh fuck, we got to, those were the moments mm-hmm. I grew the most from. So I want to make sure I don't want to become that like, or even as we Crutch. talk about kids and stuff, yeah. like, cause it's one thing to be like, Oh, you gotta be tough love to your kids or whatever. But then you go through it and you're like, I don't want to hurt the kids. Yeah. Like, well, you're going to hurt the kid if you're going to baby them all the way to the, to the end. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like, it's, you know, you, like there's one thing to glean, like, this is the thing, right? You can't save nobody from an experience. That's one. Mm. But I'm going to lead by example. I'm going to allow you to glean what you can glean because that's part of your process, right? But if I decide to say, if I see you about to walk in that pot- pothole and you see that pothole and you walk in a way, I'm, it's my job to let you fall in that pothole so you can get that experience. Now, if there's a train coming, whoa, whoa, hey, hey, hey. You don't want to do that. You're making a bad decision right now. This is why you're making a bad mm. decision right now. But there's a difference because potholes, a million potholes, you start to build some character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? <laughs> you would love. Okay, so this what Daryl was just saying is exactly the kind of parenting that I want to have when I'm when I have my children. Right? There's this book called The Positive um, Positive Discipline, mm-hmm. and I loved it because it it, it took that discipline and made it the positive so Mm -hmm. allowing them to walk into those potholes obviously to make the mistakes and learn from it and i think there was one um experiment that they did was like uh mom and kid are getting ready for school and the kids and it's really cold outside and the kid's like i don't want to wear my jacket and she's like you should wear your jacket it's cold outside i don't want to wear it and they're fighting okay don't wear your jacket obviously not keeping the children out of danger but when he comes home from school Oh my God, I was so cold today. I didn't have a jacket. Next time you'll bring a jacket. Yeah. yeah and yeah, you yeah. have you you rob it. My father, my father was a lot of things, right? But he always said, Daryl, I'm raising men. 
when you get older, when you go outside, them, the, the boys you outside playing with, you're going to see why I am the way that I am. And my father was like that. It's so crazy. I'm reading Will Smith book right now. But it's because our childhoods were eerily similar. So one summer, like not even one summer, one year, me and my father made me and my brother build a house with him. And we literally, so after school, I would have to go work on this house. During the summer when it's 100 degrees every day, I would have to go work work on this house. In the wintertime when it's 30 degrees every day, I had to work on this house. And we built that house from the foundation up. Wow. And we did it. And after basketball practice, I don't care if it's at nighttime, I had to go out there at least for an hour and nail a damn beam to work on a gable, to lay a, a drywall, a wall, or to lay uh, do the, the, the um, sheetrock on the roof lay a brick on the outside. I had, me and my brother had to be there for the entire experience. And once we were done, my father looked at us and was like, I can't say what he said, but he was just like, now look at y'all. Y'all have y'all out here building houses. Y'all friends building houses? No. Damn. Don't ever let nobody tell you what you is and what you ain't, because you a Blaylock. You my son. Mm. And so, but it was just like, man, like, and my father, when I would fall, my father ain't come get me. He ain't pick me up. When 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 life happened, my father look at me and be like, "You did? No. All right, let's go." <laughs> That's great. Wow. But he raised a fortified person. Now I also had a bunch of experience that I can't really say yeah. here. On here. <laughs> yeah. But but that, the same for that. My yeah. father being a street dude is just like he prepared me for life. Now. I clearly do. I'm out here in California, and what I do, I can't really help me. I'm gonna have a son and be like, "Hey, we've been gonna build this house." Yeah. But yeah. he taught me those 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 lifelong lessons and those 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 jewels that I can recreate with my son yeah. in some form of fashion. So wow, that's beautiful, man. And I, I, one of my very first like probably the very first fight I was ever in was like a neighborhood kid. And I remember fighting him. He was on his, he was on like rollerblades. <laughs> everybody, was telling us, everybody was telling us to fight, right? So we start fighting. And I remember looking up and my dad was at the door of our house with the door op- open, just watching. He didn't come out there. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. He knew, and he's always been really great at that. All right, let's see. Let's, you know, you're going to learn your lesson. You're either going to win or you're not going to win or whatever's going to happen, but you're going to figure it out. You a man or your amounts. So yeah. Which one are you going to be today? That's my father. Yeah, wow. And those are the lessons. My father... My brother always run down the street to come to me because he was always running his damn mouth, and I'm gonna go get my brother. Nah, and I have to go downstairs. Man. I have to go down the street and I always fight older kids because of him, you know. <laughs> but my father, and one day, one day my father was outside too. He just looked at me he was like, "All right, yeah, yeah you know." Yeah. He came back yeah. home he was like, "You win." I'm like, "No, nah, but I got him good." He was <laughs> like, "All right then." He, I bet you we won't mess with you no more. And they never mess with me again or yeah. my brother again. Wow. And these kids, I was like 13, 12, 13, 12, 11, 12, and it was like 14, 15. So, you know, yeah. I didn't care. I had, I, ain't, I was never afraid of nobody. My mom yeah. let my sister have fights outside of the house. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Supervi- Nike- supervised Nike- sanctioned fights. Yeah. She'd be like, <laughs> if you don't win, I'm beating you up when you get home. Exactly. Yeah. You know, the, you know, you know the drill. Was, yeah. Um, I love that, man. Hey, uh, man. No, but uh, yeah, I always love our conversations and super excited for everything you got going on. And yeah, when man. this, when this, when the strike ends and as this, as the floodgates <sighs> open, you know, I'm grateful to know that like people like us that have just been putting the work in to stack the deck in our favor to really, you know, experience something, a time in TV and film that is probably unmatched in history. Yeah. Um, very close to when like the streaming wars first started happening. But now it's like the floodgates are going to open. It's going to be a lot of new opportunities and new rules that, you know, luckily we're dedicated to figuring out and how mm-hmm. can we, we move in this in this in this new business. Um, but yeah, man, congrats on all the success and everything that you're building. And, uh, yeah, man, happy birthday month. Hey, (laughs) love you, Irvin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, likewise with you, man, I've always been marveled at your dedication and your persistence, uh, the way that you just create ways for you to, to figure this out and and new business streams and models and you teach yourself everything. So you always been a, uh, 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 inspiration to me. 
and someone I always can come to if like I got a question about something, man. So yeah, it's been I'm excited for you. Thanks, man. It's, it, it's it's dope to be around dope people that are are dedicated to the same things that you can grow into something versus yeah. being surrounded because it is who you're surrounded by, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah, glad we're surrounded by each other. Yeah. <laughs> by each other. <laughs> we, we might be the last of the Mohicans. Yeah. <laughs> Tell everybody where they can find you. Oh uh, yeah, y'all can find me on my handle, uh, Daryl Blaylock Jr. At, uh, at uh, which one? Instagram. Uh, Country Boy 24 on um, Twitter and my name on same name on Facebook. You mean yeah. X? Oh, X, right? Man, it's uh, Twitter. The, mom, the mama called me Twitter, I'm calling me Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know nothing about no X. Mm-hmm. And I always love your perspectives, Jai Ma. Yes, oh, thank you for glad, being a breath of glad, fresh air. Glad yes. I can be over here. You gotta have me in that seat. You know yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, we we love it. Jai Ma, official. Everywhere. Oh, oh. And uh, to many more amazing conversations at this table. Amen. Uh, you guys can find me, Mark Rodriguez TV, everywhere at Mastermind Media. See y'all next time. Amen. Peace. Peace.